This French fry makes McDonald's $13 billion every year, more than Iceland's GDP. $13 billion from a potato. But here's what'll surprise you. You're in your car. Drive through. 11.47 p.m. That fry you just grabbed? Perfect. Crispy shell. Fluffy inside. But by the time you get home, it's soggy. Limp, disappointing. McDonald's spent decades and millions engineering that perfect fry. NASA-level food science. Specific potato genetics. A nine-month process from farm to fryer. But it all comes down to understanding what's happening inside that potato. And once you understand it, you can get pretty damn close at home. So how do they make a $13 billion fry? What's the science? And why does it betray you on the drive home? Let's explore the process. Here's the thing. McDonald's fries don't start in a kitchen. They start in a laboratory. Russet Burbank potatoes, specifically bred for them. Genetically selected for length, starch content, sugar levels, high starch, low moisture. That ratio is everything. When you fry a potato, you're removing water and building crust simultaneously. High starch means structure. Low moisture means less steam fighting that crust. Waxy potatoes like Reds or Yukon Golds. Too much moisture. They steam inside their own skin. Never crispy. The potatoes get cut into precise 7 mm strips. Not 9. Not 5. 7. Consistent thickness means consistent cooking. That's not romance. That's engineering. Then comes blanching. 170 degree water for 15 minutes. Removes natural sugars that burn unpredictably. Control the color. Then they spray each fry with dextrose. Remove sugar. Add it back. Dextrose browns predictably at 350 degrees. Agricultural chaos becomes industrial perfection. Next, they freeze them. Freezing ruptures, cell walls, releases moisture. Drier interior means crispier outside. Now here's where it gets interesting. The double fry method. This separates good fries from legendary fries. First fry, 320 to 325 degrees at the processing plant. Lower temperature. You're cooking the inside, not browning outside. The potato becomes tender. The exterior forms structure, but doesn't color. Pale. Almost wrong, but perfect. Then they rest. Moisture migrates from inside to surface and evaporates. The exterior dries, crystallizes. When you hit it with high heat, that dried surface shatters into glass crisp perfection. Second fry at your McDonald's. 350 degrees, two to three minutes. Building color through the Maillard reaction. Sugars and proteins bonding to create hundreds of flavor compounds. The exterior crisps. The interior stays fluffy because you already cooked it. Crispy shell. Fluffy interior. That's the $13 billion. But here's the enemy. Steam. Inside that fry, moisture is turning to steam. Steam is trapped by the crispy exterior. Steam softens things. Given time, it breaks down that crust from inside. That's why your fries went from perfect to soggy. You trapped them in a sealed bag during the critical cooling window. Steam had nowhere to go. McDonald's figured this out. Their boxes have ventilation slots. The bag has holes, not decoration. Engineering, moisture escape routes, Temperature matters. McDonald's serves fries at exactly 165 degrees. Too hot, can't taste the salt. Too cold, oils congeal. At 165, your taste buds are primed for maximum flavor. The crispy window? Seven minutes. After that, physics wins. The salt? Applied at precisely 185 degrees. Hot enough that crystals stick but salt partially dissolves, maximizing flavor penetration. They've calculated the bliss point, 230 milligrams per serving, enough to trigger cravings, 
not enough to make you stop. The uniformity plays mind tricks. Every fry is 7 millimeters. Your brain recognizes consistency and builds expectation patterns. When expectations are met perfectly, you get satisfaction. When satisfaction is predictable, you get cravings. They've hacked your reward system. But wait, there's more. McDonald's uses an oil blend, canola, corn, soybean. They add beef flavoring. Used to be beef tallow until 1990. Tallow was better. Saturated fat carries flavor differently. Oil temperature drops when you add cold fries. Overload the fryer. Temperature crashes. Greasy. Their fryers have instant recovery. Salt? Applied at 185 degrees. Crystals stick. Partially dissolve. The bliss point. 230 milligrams per serving. Triggers cravings. 7 millimeter uniformity creates brain pattern addiction. They've hacked your reward system. Now here's the kicker. You can't replicate McDonald's exactly. They use potato varieties you can't buy. Blast freezers at minus 40. Commercial fryers with instant recovery. Industrial precision you don't have. But you can make excellent fries. Here's what matters. Russets only. 7 to 9 millimeters. Soak 30 minutes in cold water. Removes surface starch. Blanch in 170 degree water for 10 minutes. Pat completely dry. First fry. 320 degrees, 3 to 5 minutes. Pale but cooked. Rest minimum 30 minutes. Hours or overnight is better. This is critical. Second fry. 375 degrees, 2 to 3 minutes until golden. Drain on wire rack. Salt immediately while glistening. Serve in 5 minutes. Advanced. Add baking soda to blanching water for rougher surface. Or freeze after first fry, then fry from frozen. So, let's go back to your car. 11.47 p.m. That $13 billion fry. But now you know it's engineered genetics. 7 millimeter cutting, 170 degree blanching, dextrose coating, blast freezing, double frying, 185 degree salt application, ventilated packaging. You can't match industrial precision, but you understand the science. The next time you make fries, you'll cut consistently. Soak, blanch at 170. Fry low, rest, fry high. Salt while wet. Serve in five minutes. You'll understand why that drive through fry was perfect and why it didn't last. And maybe you'll eat them in the parking lot while they're still golden. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work, one story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, Trust the process.